Good morning. Before we pray the capital campaign prayer this morning, we want to update you on the campaign. As I stand here and look into the faces of the people sitting before me, I see those of you who have given and continue to give of yourselves to both the St. Genevieve Parish and Valley Catholic Schools. You are the people who give of your time to support our Christian mission with the St. Vincent de Paul Society. You give of yourself as ushers, readers, choir, finance, school and parish boards, and much more. You are the people who understand the importance of Catholic education in our past, our present, and our future as we prepare the children of our community with a strong educational background along with strong Christian values. The ultimate goal for a parish is to create an environment where everyone will feel welcome and want to be involved in the workings of the parish, even those who currently may not feel as engaged as others are those who have left the parish family as an active participant. We continue striving to touch the lives of everyone, especially those who seek but have not found a sense of community in our parish. While we understand that a building alone, such as this church, our schools, the new parish hall, cannot serve the parish cause by themselves, we do feel that it presents more opportunities for more people to become engaged. These buildings will be the places where we can become a parish community committed to the needs of everyone. It is because of this that we are here today asking for your support in the final stage of the Faith, Family, and Foundations Capital Campaign. Many of you have already participated and we appreciate your support, but our work continues and we need the help of everyone to reach our final goal. Please help us give St. Vincent de Paul Society a space in the new parish hall so they can continue to help those who are in need in the St. Genevieve area. Help us prepare our children in the Early Childhood Center. Help us give our band and performing arts students a respectable place to practice and perform. And help us develop a parish facility that will give our parish community a place to connect and socialize not only on weekends, but throughout the week. These are very exciting times and events as we continue to grow the history of the St. Genevieve Parish. Our dreams continue, and we need your support as we bring our campaign to a close. After Mass, we will have volunteers at the back of church with capital campaign information, and we ask you to take a minute to pick up your packet if you have not been contacted as of yet or receive solicitation information. Your packets are in boxes in the back of church in alphabetical order. If you do not find a packet, just advise the volunteer and they will see that one is prepared and delivered to you. Volunteers after this mass will be Tom Loida and myself. Next, we would like to invite all of you to tour and walk through our new parish hall and let us show you the work that is being done and the project that has been undertaken. The new parish hall has open house today from seven in the morning till noon. And we hope that you'll join us for coffee and donuts while touring the facility with your fellow parishioners. We need your support. We appreciate your prayers. We look forward to the future of our parish and schools because of the commitment that you're making today. This is our time. This is the legacy we will leave for future generations. We thank you for your support and willingness to be involved. If you will, let's play to pray the capital campaign prayer together. Heavenly Father, you have been good to the people of St. Genevieve Catholic Church and Valley Catholic Schools. Through your love and grace, we have built a strong community of faith, family, and foundations a family that has grown and prospered in times of joy and hardship for more than 250 years. Now we humbly ask your help as we set out to meet the future needs of our parish. Give us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to make the sacrifices before us and to accomplish the work ahead. Through the power of your spirit, help us to ensure that we as a parish community continue to serve you one another 
and our neighbors for the next 250 years. With grateful hearts, we ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please stand as Father will be blessing our palms this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may also share in his resurrection and in his life. Please lift up the palms you have, uh, were given when you entered Mass. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem, and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt, and laid their cloaks over them, and sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Amen. <clears throat> Today we celebrate Palm Sunday 
Our entrance hymn is number 356 in the hymnal, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, number 356. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. First reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ears that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. <clears throat> Word of the Lord.
Our second reading is a letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equity with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. With your spirit. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Jesus, Jesus, Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to one another, Surely it is not I, not I Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas said, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit 
of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all of Though all may have their faith in you be shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour. Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to the sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out? as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard. And going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sahedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, The high priest rose and addressed them. Have you no answer? 
What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell under the oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over and said, You too were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus of Again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Leave your speech to At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply, deeply regretted what he had done. They returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and been trained in innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look what you do to yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money, but said, It is not lawful to us in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they use it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife said, sent him a message. I have nothing to do with this righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. 
Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of his cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrene named Simon, the man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which names, means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He can save others, he cannot save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now, because of my sins. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there looking on from a distance who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, they came, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in a clean linen and laid it in his new tomb, which he had honed in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. 
but Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, one of the, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing the seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We find ourselves once more at the beginning of the celebration of Holy Week. A very easy temptation to fall to is that we are just remembering some wonderful things Jesus did for us so many years ago, so many centuries ago. But the truth is, while we remember a historical fact, Jesus giving his life to set us free from sin, we are also remembering that as we walk along and bring this story to life, each and every day, the passion, death, and resurrection is at work in our own lives here in 2014. Jesus had told his apostles, your faith will all be shaken in me. Is not our faith at times put strongly to the test or even shaken to the point where at times we turn away from God? Is our belief in a good and loving God challenged or greatly sent back? when we go through a week like we have this past week, when two daughters in St. Genevieve were killed in a car accident and two workers were killed in the mine. Isn't that such an incredible test to our faith? How many times do we just get complacent in life, focusing on our own needs like the apostles who, after having a full belly, were falling asleep in the garden at the same moment Jesus was sweating blood, preparing to take up the cross. How many times are we asked to be Simon of Cyrene, to reach out and support one of our brothers and sisters who are in need, carrying their crosses of life? How many times do we die many thousands of little deaths before the time we step beyond this world? How many times do we call for the crucifixion of our brothers and sisters in this community when we gossip? This story is very much alive. Christ lives and dies within each one of us with each day. And so it's important to take time this week to let, our, let ourselves step away from the busyness of life the best we can to open our hearts to what God wants to speak to us as we go through the celebration today of Palm Sunday of Thursday when we gather to commemorate the Last Supper and the institution of the Eucharist and priesthood. When we gather on Good Friday to commemorate our Lord's death on the cross for the salvation of the world. And then when we gather together again on Easter, 
to remember that God is the God of the living, the God of the resurrection and new life. And where does God wish to give us new life? After we have gone through this 40-day period of Lent, of setting things aside, opening new avenues for God to grow in our hearts. And so, along with Father Dennis, I invite you to participate fully in all these masses and services this Holy Week as we open our hearts and walk with Christ who walks with us and longs to give us new life. We now stand and together we make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. We now turn to our Heavenly Father, entrusting to him our cares and our needs. For all in the church, that we, that as we recall Christ dying and rising, we may empty ourselves so that God can fill us up and raise us up, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the candidates for full communion, that they may enter more deeply into the mystery of God's unconditional love through the celebrations of Holy Week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Christ of conversion, that we may allow God to lead us away from the selfish pursuits and guide us toward new opportunities to serve others in love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who must bear the cross each day, particularly parents of sick children, the homebound and the terminally ill, that God's presence and strength will sustain them through the challenge of each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who care for the dying and the grieving, that they may be signs of God's love and presence for all who are facing death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are working to assist those recovering from natural disasters, that God will inspire their words, make fruitful their work, and help them to bring consolation and hope to all who are suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater respect for human life, that every heart may honor the mystery of human life at all stages along life's journey, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, in an end to violence, particularly in the Holy Land and throughout the Mideast, that the death of Christ may turn all hearts from violence and give them courage to seek new ways to resolve conflicts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, listen to these, our needs spoken aloud and those that are hidden within our hearts. And in accordance with your will, grant them through Christ our Lord.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, broke the bread, gave and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are a faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <laughs> deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion song is number 370 in the hymnal, Jesus the Lord, number 370.
Let us stand and pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so also by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the following announcements. In your kindness, please pray for the repose of the souls of Janet Jokers, Danielle Falk, and Zoe Reimer, whose funeral services were this past week. Divine Mercy pamphlets are at the entrances of church for anyone who would like to say the nine-day novena that begins on Good Friday. Our recessional hymn is number 368 in the hymnal, Were You There, number 368. And please keep an eye on the bulletin for all the times of masses and services during Holy Week. And again, uh, thank you on behalf of Father Dennis and the Capital Campaign Committee for all who have uh, been so generous toward our capital campaign. And again, there are uh, representatives in the back. For those who did not get reached during the main part of the campaign, we do have packets available for you and donuts and coffee and a walk through in the Rosier building following mass. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the joy and peace of Christ.
Channel 7 and 98 TV and web broadcasting are made possible through contributions and donations from viewers like you. Thank you for your support. Our community programs and specials are made possible through donations and contributions from viewers like you.